Hello and welcome back. <laughs> oh, we've got a lovely day today. Uh, it's really nice to <laughs> finally get a lovely day. I'm going to make the most of it. I've got so much to go out and to catch up on. So the list <laughs> is pretty long, especially for these uh, mornings too. Onions, lettuces, potatoes, carrots. I've got to swap over some spinach. I've got the broad beans to go out. And the list is endless at the moment. So what I want is a really good day today and possibly tomorrow morning. So where do I start? Right, so first job I think is going to be to untangle this uh, Monish 2. This is the Bayesu, the giant one. <laughs> and it's living up to its name at the moment and to try and get it into this uh, wigwam. Um, which is my first attempt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to untangle these. Um, it's going to take a while. And we'll try and get them in here then. Um, they were a right nightmare to get out of the <laughs> the greenhouse. They're just tangled up with everything. So I've learnt my lesson for next time. Right, I'll try and untangle these now and see how we go. Right, there you go. I'm actually quite pleased the way that's turned out. That's, you know, quite bushy <laughs> with all those in there. Um, I did pinch some of them out, uh, the ones on the, in the middle bit, uh, one of those. Some was accidental <laughs> and some was on purpose. And then I've given it a good old water. And we've already got a ladybird already on them. The garden is so full of ladybirds at the moment, especially in the sunshine. Right, so what's next? Oh, I think I'm going to get... <laughs> get this uh, carrot tub back into the green now it's just up my way <laughs> it's in the way at the moment um, so same as last time I've cut the base off and it's been filled with um, half sand and then the rest is a mixture of topsoil spent compost and some compost with um, a layer of comp compost at the bottom Right, so same as last time, I'm going to split it into two halves. This side is going to be the Touchon and this side is going to be the Muscard. I've done them both before. Um, Touchon, really nice one, really enjoyed it. Didn't get much success with the Muscard. Um, so we're going to see how this works now. I've just put another quick layer of um, sieve compost on top and given it a bit of a wetting down. So uh, let's get these sewing. Right, so that's the onion bed um, completed. Uh, I've done them again, uh, 200, just to get the lettuces in between. And that's where the leeks will go later on in the season. Well, I'm really pleased with that. That actually is uh, Instagram worthy, isn't it? Um, what I've done is here I've put in a couple of, in each row, I've done one Chinese cabbage and this one I've done two. And what I'm trying to see is whether that actually protects the lettuces from the slugs so they just go and eat the Chinese cabbages. Because that worked well over there in the kale bed. And as soon as the Chinese cabbages um, had gone to season and took them out, then the kale started to get attacked by the slugs. So I'm going to see how it goes with these lettuces. Because <laughs> they're looking really good at the moment. I mean, like I say, that is... That's a nice picture, that is. Right, what's next? Well, I think I'm going to do the potatoes next. Right, so there we go. We've got uh, three tubs, 15 litre. Again, they've just got a couple of inches of rejuvenated compost in them with uh, a little bit of slow-release fertiliser. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to top it up with just uh, rejuvenated compost and, again, Slow release fertilizer just mixed in. So we got one in the first one, two small ones in the second, and another one in the third. So I've got a question. Um, you get determinate potatoes and indeterminate potatoes. So the determinate ones, they just grow on one level. And indeterminate, uh, you get them tubers coming off the stem as it continues to grow up. And that's why people earth up. So what are Charlotte potatoes? I've tried to find out on the internet what actually, whether they're determined or indeterminate. I think 
they're indeterminate. Now it's the most popular uh, potato in the UK. Uh, well, the most popular salad potato, yet yeah, nobody seems to be able to say whether it's determinate or indeterminate. So that's the question. Um, put it down in the comments below if you know the answer. Um, I think, like I say, I think it's indeterminate. Right, I'm just going to top these up and I'm then going to move on to uh, pinching out the sweet peas and getting them in the onion bed. And I'm going to start cleaning up the onions because it looks like, well, <laughs> I'll come to that in a minute anyway. Right, it's so nice just to take the covers off <laughs> and just to actually see the bed. I'm really looking forward to when I'm able to take these off. Uh, I think I'm going to be end of May, uh, maybe a little bit earlier because, like I say, it's just nice to see the bed. Right, first off, the onions. Now, I did, uh, about a week ago, uh, find some flies just hovering underneath the net and they did have yellow caps on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and inspect all these leaves. I can see a few dots on them. Um, so any of those, I'm just going to clean up. And what I've done is I've cleaned them up and cut through them just to see if I can see any of the uh, small little maggots of the allium leaf miner. I haven't found anything yet. Um, so like I say, on this one here, um, I can see some of the the runs where some of the flies have had a little nibble, but I can't actually see any tracks. And what you'll see is tracks if the maggots are moving downwards. Um, so like I say, I'm just going to clean it all up and just see what we've got. I mean, I might as well take the opportunity while I've got the net off. And then what I'm going to do is plant up all these um, sweet peas now I will be pinching them out and I've got these sweet peas from Eagle Sweet Peas and what they say is pinch them out on, when they've got three leaves, pinch them down to the second leaf. Well, I'm, <laughs> I've left them a little bit too long for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch them out on the third leaf and uh, we'll see how we go with that. Right, so bring you back when I've done all this. Right, that's tied up very nicely. Um, we've got all the sweet peas in and I've cleaned up all the uh, onions. And that's what I think I'll do um, regularly during the Allium leaf miner um, season, which is, was it March and April, they lay their eggs. And the eggs hatch in two to four days. Then they've got to mine down. So if I tidy up the leaves periodically um, after that period, then hopefully if they do get any iron leaf miner, then I'm tidying up or cutting off those leaves that uh, that have been infected. Well, we see how we go. It's, <laughs> it's a game of Russian roulette, really, isn't it? It's just you know, some people will be lucky and some won't because it's just literally spread right through the country. Right, like I say, I'm pleased with how that is and it's a bit of a soul destroying. I've got to put a net back on and cover this up because this, this looks nice and it will look nice once I've got the, I'm going to have the Casper pumpkins at the front here with three cucumbers and Casper pumpkins. And then we're going to have Jack B. Little with uh, three um, curry as well at the back. And they've all chitted as well. I'll show you those later. Um, but yeah, so this bed should look nice with the sweet peas going up it, pumpkins, cucumbers, and the onions hopefully uh, really growing big. Right, I'll show you the um, broad beans now and up at the top. Uh, I know, I just had to get this view in. It's looking quite spectacular now. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I just got to get that view in. So yeah, we've got three um, broad bean beds at the moment. Um, these were planted up the other day. So, and 
I can't take the credit for these. Um, Sarah's planted these off. So she wanted me to mention that as well. <laughs> I'm properly getting the views in today, aren't I? Right, so these they do need water. And what we did this year is we planted them the correct spacing. Last year we did them at 225 and they were too tight. We got hit by winds and they just all went over and they all jumbled up together. So this year we've done them 300 and hopefully we're going to get some nice shoots, uh, second shoots coming off them. And quite a lot of them are, we are now. And they all have all been hit by wind again. So we had loads of uh, high winds over the week, last weekend. And they stood up pretty well. Some of them I will start to support. And I have done that there. Um, but they're doing quite well. I'm quite pleased with them. So I have fingers crossed this year we get a good crop off them. And as soon as we get the first uh, pods at the bottom, I'm going to be nipping out the tops um, so that we don't get hit by black fly like we did last year. And we lost so many because of that. Right, and my next job, which I'm going to do off camera now because I'm starting to run out of time. I want to post this video this afternoon. Is I'm going to move these spinaches because they're crowding out now the peas and they're going to go into this bed because most of that kale now um, except for the first two flower, uh, plants, they're still getting nice florets on them. The rest has uh, gone over now. Um, so I'm going to do another bit of uh, top coat of compost on that. And I'll start planting up all these uh, spinaches. <laughs> oh, we're just having so much spinach at the moment. Uh, you know, <laughs> in June when it starts to bolt. <laughs> I'll be glad of that. Um, it's just it's just a huge amount of spinach. And again, these beds, all these beds need watering. So that's what I'll get onto this afternoon. Right, I've done so many seeds in the last week. Um, but it's nice now to actually start um, direct sowing into the beds <laughs> instead of <laughs> into pots. Right, so what I'm going to do is these, I'm going to have two rows here of dill. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do a row of dill here and then I'm going to do two rows of quick crops, uh, French breakfast radish and uh, Diana as well, which is a nice, looks nice purple one that one does. Uh, so they're going to go there and then once they're finished I'll do another row of dill here and uh, we'll see how we go. Um, the dill, I'll do around about two inches of uh, seed, I think it's what, every 300, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, and then I just thin them out to whichever ones uh, are growing fastest. But like I say, it's nice to start directly sowing. I know I need to sort that out so I can directly sow um, the parsnips. So I'm not gonna get the best harvest of parsnips this year, but whatever I get, at least I'll get some. Um, because we're not eating as many parsnips as we used to now, so everything keeps changing with the amount of stuff that we're growing. Right, let me show you what else I've sown. Right, so over the last two weeks I've been really busy in sowing uh, plenty of seed. So what I've done is I've done the Casper pumpkin, the Jack B. Little and the Kuri. Uh, more spring onions and beetroots and a whole loads of kales, including the first lot of uh, Purple sprouts and broccoli the, for the winter. Um, I've done five uh, multi sow and all I'm going to do is just keep a couple of those. And I'll do uh, another sowing probably in June. And what else have we been doing? I think that's it. Um, yeah. But I'm starting to get some space in here now. And this, this is the last of the curries. I did five. And this one is the last one to uh, chit. So this method is working really well. Wet paper towel, nip out the top of the seed and leave it on a little bit of heat. Um, I, I use the Super 7. So just leave it on a little bit of heat and they've all chitted. So that's worked really well. Um, so I've got spares. <laughs> and it's nice to have spares. Hopefully I can give some of them away. I've got, I've got plenty of spare to, uh, tomatoes still to go out. Right, so that's been two real good productive days and it's been really nice to get out into the garden. 
So, like I always say, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope to see you again.